They still don't care about the results of games, okay? Let's really, really, really make that clear. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Cubs 14, I think it was. Pirates Five, I don't know. It it was awful. And it was awful because of gross roster mismanagement. And to an extent, not really gross, but bad game management. Here's the thing. Sometimes you have to just step back from a situation. Instead of allowing the other party to explain things in microcosms, just step back from it. And understand that in the first two games of this series with the Cubs, that the Pirates had outscored them 19-2. to These were two blowouts in which you can get length out of relievers. You can get multiple innings. You can utilize guys like O. Heath Hembry to get you multiple innings the day before you DFA him, as they did yesterday. This situation, the hole in the rotation that was caused by Zach Thompson being put on the 15-day IL a couple of days ago, didn't sneak up on anyone. It didn't sneak up on Ben Charrington. It didn't sneak up on Derek Shelton. It didn't sneak up on Oscar Marine. Everybody involved knew it was coming. And they could have planned accordingly. They could have adjusted accordingly through those games Monday and Tuesday. Instead, they brought up Jared Eikhoff from Altoona, not Indianapolis. Not Indianapolis's most talented pitcher, Michael Burrows. And you know, he could have lined up reasonably well. His next start is Saturday or something. Again, it didn't sneak up on anybody. They could have figured this out. They could have had somebody else ready, or they could have just done one of those bullpen games, which they've done. They've done under Charrington and Shelton, where you just have someone like Chase DeYoung start the game and say, listen, Chase, I mean, we know you're a reliever. You're a little bit stretched out. Dude, just get us two, three innings, all right? You can do it. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. So Eikhoff goes out there and gets absolutely annihilated 10 runs on 5 billion hits on 75 walks. Uh, He hit a bunch of guys too. I'm not wasting my time sharing his stats with you. He was horrible. And he also became the first pitcher in the history of baseball to give up 10 runs in consecutive starts, meaning 10 runs in this one and 10 runs in a start he made last year for the Mets. This is beyond pathetic. You don't even continue pitching for a living after something like that happens. You just find something else to do with your life. This was their choice. This was their choice. Now, of course, DeYoung comes in in long relief and puts up three and two-thirds innings of scoreless ball, which you could have had at the beginning. You could have had at the beginning. Why? Because they're just completely comfortable throwing games away. Outcomes remain not even secondary for this group. They're they're not tertiary, and I don't even know what comes after tertiary. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Shelton was asked, after the game, what went into the decision to go with Eikhoff? 
Yeah, we, I mean, we talked through it, and I, and I think depending on where we're at, I mean, the fact that we, we're playing here, then we go to Tampa, and then, yeah. and then we go to Washington. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, we're creative yeah. in, in any way. We just we, we thought in this situation it was best to probably call up a fresh arm. There it was. That's it. Shrug and a smile, and there you have it. No big deal. So, Jack Sawinski hits three homers on Sunday. O'Neill Cruz and Bly Madras come up and somehow end up being equally good in those two blowouts of the Cubs and the city and the fan base get all excited. The team itself, way more important than what anyone on the outside thinks, the team itself is getting excited and eh, whatever, we don't care. We don't care. That's the message that's sent, and that has to be. Though the players never talk about this, the message that's received. Things are starting to feel good. You heard, saw, and read the reactions from some of these players, the the words of confidence. No, they don't expect to win them all, and that's not why I'm saying this. The Pirates could have lost this game under any number of circumstances. And it would have been no big deal because these games and this record and everything else, you know, they don't technically matter. It's not like they're contending for anything in 2022. But what you don't want to do is see your players rise up, see them start coming together and say, you know what? We, as a management team, don't value that. We don't think you're important enough to go get a starting pitcher for this game. You can also, by the way, just grab somebody off waivers. There's 4A guys all over the place. It would require a roster move. Oh, no. Oh, no. You mean you might have to DFA Heath Hembry, which you had to do anyway to get this guy up from Altoona? And then, there, this, this is the part where... You, you can't even make this stuff up. Like, this is out of the onion. It's a Saturday Night Live skit. The Pirates are on television putting this Altoona guy out there, getting completely destroyed, and Shelton's letting him die out there. You could see from his second pitch of the game, which was lasered for a single, that he had no business being out there. So this guy is just allowed to bake himself into the ground with you know, whatever it was. I think the crowd was 11,000 plus or whatever, but it's still 11,000 people that paid to watch your product. And 24 people on the field or in the dugout who you want to be invested to the max in everything that you're doing, which purportedly includes winning the game that's right in front of you. And they just let him stay out there to die. And boy, did he ever do that. But while that's happening, on the AT&T Sportsnet broadcast, the announcers, which in this case were Greg Brown and Neil Walker, hooked up for a live phone call with Michael Burrows, who's been the best pitcher in the minors this year and who's earned, and I do mean earned, a promotion to Indianapolis. He's on the phone with them while this... This nobody is getting destroyed out there. I mean, all that was missing was the laugh track. Unbelievable. For three days, you get to think everything is really getting up there. And then you realize, wow, the people who run the team still don't care about what's happening right in front of their eyes. When we come back, just one question. Today's J1Q comes from Chris, who asks, with both the Major League Baseball draft and the trade deadline looming next month and a spacious left field at PNC Park, why don't the Pirates prioritize left-handed starting pitching more when acquiring talent? They've done a good job with acquiring left-handed bats, and that plays well with the home park, but pitching, not so much. And, and Chris, you're right. There's not much left-handed pitching in the organization. And that 
goes from top to bottom. Uh, in fact, really, other than you know Jose Quintana and now Cam View having been very recently brought up from Indy, there just isn't much. Certainly not in Pittsburgh, where Anthony Bonda is the only other lefty, and really just nowhere. Uh, you have to go all the way down to Anthony Solomito, one of the more prized picks from last year's draft, but he's light years away from making any kind of impact here. But, and here's where I'm going to give you some background, general managers all the way down to scouts don't ever look at that. They never look at, oh, the organization needs someone throwing from this side. Uh, they don't ever look at it from the hitting aspect either. They're just looking for players. That is the way every general manager I've ever covered with this team has approached it. It's the way I've heard every executive everywhere handles it. And there's a reason for that. Their feeling is all that matters is developing the talent. They're looking at here's raw talent in and here's what we make out of it. Who are the players that give us the best chance? Who are the young, raw, undeveloped products who give us the best chance of molding them into something significant at the major league level? Now, why is it not a concern? Simple. As any GM will tell you, and Ben Charrington absolutely falls into this category, you can adjust whatever is needed at the top level when the time comes. If you've got a ton of right-handed pitching, for example, and you're missing a lefty, go get a lefty, meaning trade one of your righties for a lefty or just sign one out of free agency. Uh, it tends to even itself out over the course of time. This year, when the Pirates felt they wanted to have a lefty in the rotation, they went out and got Quintana. That's obviously gone well for them. When they wanted one of those last year, they went and got Tyler Anderson. That also went well for them, including when he was traded, in that they got a reasonable and fair return. And lefty relievers, that's never a thing. There are tons and tons of those available every winter, and they don't cost very much. The same principle, by the way, applies way more than you might think to all positions. Yes, there's a certain percentage of pitchers versus hitters that a GM will hope to get in a draft, but if they end up with a draft, and I can't remember off the top of my head there was a team, it might be Anaheim. Uh, it might be the Angels that did this, where they drafted like 5 million pitchers in a single class. And again, a lot of questions came like yours, I'm sure, uh, over on the West Coast. They're like, what are you doing here? What about hitters? We need hitters. We need this. We need that. And the Angels, of course, have been short of pitching like ever since Mike Trout arrived. But it doesn't matter. Because it takes prospects so long to develop so many steps and so many things can go well, as wrong as they can write, you're just creating and nurturing assets. And by the time you're ready to form a major league roster, that's when you can move them around. But as I mentioned in the opening segment, they're not anywhere near having that kind of thought process. They didn't even care to put a starter out on the mound. Last night, unbelievable. Anyway, I'm going to the ballpark today. Uh, I'm pretty sure that both teams will have an actual starting pitcher on the mound. It's a 12:35 first pitch. I'll be covering it for DK Pittsburgh Sports. Hope you call them and hope to have you back here tomorrow morning.